In one of the first videos we made, I said I wasn't going to make this an Extra Hova's Witness channel. This is our family channel, and I don't intend to make it an Extra Hova's Witness channel. And now... <sighs> now it feels like we should. Yeah, we have only put about eight videos up so far, and the outpouring of support has been absolutely tremendous. We're humbled, we're honored by the amount of people who are commenting, the amount of people who are viewing our videos is amazing. I mean, after after only about a month of having videos up, we've gotten so many more new subscribers and so many views immediately on our videos that we feel inclined to continue. Some of you in the comments have even encouraged us to continue. We've had people reach out to us and connect with us who knew us years ago when we were still Jehovah's Witness and it's been amazing reconnecting with these people and actually having conversations with them and hearing their stories and just knowing that they're out now too is, is exciting for us. The whole purpose of this video to thank people for their support is also to tell people who if they haven't haven't commented or they're afraid or whatever or they're alone it's okay we, we see you we still see you and we still hear you and so please just know that if you're struggling if you're struggling with coming out of the religion you're not alone you might feel lonely but you're not alone i was hearing from people in the comments about how they would really like to make videos themselves but they're not quite in a position to be able to because they're still in the process of physically exiting or they're still fading. We want to know what we can do to help you. If you're physically in but mentally out, but you want to be heard or you want to express what you're experiencing, those stories can be shared. You're not a silent sufferer. This is the perfect platform for us to be able to do that. We hear you and we want to help. There's many ways to go about this anonymously. I mean, you can make an anonymous YouTube account. You don't have to put your face, you don't have to put your voice in order to be heard. There's a lot that can be said. It's important to get the information out there for one thing but also the amount of support that you will receive in return is astronomical. We never expected to get the, the sheer numbers of support that we have. We never expected to have this many people watching us. Or even care about what we have to say. And our story isn't even that significant when compared to some of the other atrocious things that have happened to Jehovah's Witnesses but we still empathize with them. We want to do what we can to help. We encourage you to make a video, write a letter, post it on your social medias. We as ex Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones who have the ability to share our stories and yours are just as valid as ours. We have heard from people from Central America, from Poland, from Switzerland, from all over the UK. New Zealand and Canada. I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of comments and I have tried my hardest to personally reply to each and every one of you because your kindness and your outpouring of love and support has not gone unnoticed and it's moved us to want to continue this. You have to let us know what it is you guys are more interested in seeing, whether it's personal stories about us, if you would like to contribute your story and allow us to help you speak up or if you want to see more of the things that helped us to make the conscious choice to abandon everything that you believe our whole life you know there are still plenty of information out there uh that i think would seem to be quite presumptuous to to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that god is using that speaks volumes that help solidify our belief.
that we made the right choice to leave. Something that I feel very inclined toward is just helping those of us who are struggling to come out to recover and to know you're not alone. The stories that people have sent us and the experiences that other people share in the organization and coming out of the organization. It kind of proves to us that we really can't stop. The other night I was reading a story to the kids and it was The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. The end of the book says, unless, unless people like you care a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. And it hit me really hard to see all of the people who responded so positively to the videos, the comments and the encouragement and the inspiration really to keep going. Yeah, the sheer amount of people who are loving and encouraging and kind and supportive. Frankly, it's all we really wanted from the videos that we have made so far. It's all we really wanted was to... Just to put in our two cents. Throw in our reasons out there and let the universe make of it what it will. Yeah, just expressing our story, our experience, but most of all, our support too. Because after reading so many comments and so many stories that you guys have shared with us, it's moved me to tears. Those words unless just kept echoing in my brain and I lamented to Brittany even before I read that story. What can we do? I lamented about having any power or ability to stand up for any change. You know, we're just we're just us. And then it was the next night I was reading that story and those words hit me and I decided that we had to keep doing it. Reading the story to the kids and having those words impact me. I still was trying to figure out how or, or what to do about it. I was watching a YouTube video with uh, one of our kids. It's not Mahaya, it's Mariah. Mariah. That video ended and an autoplay kicked in and it queued up the Smothers Brothers live singing a song called The Impossible Dream. The lyrics were designed to give you that extra strength that we all need in our lives from time to time. Dick stops to talk about what the song means to him. The words that he expressed just perfectly impacted in combination with the unless words that we needed to do this. We don't always get life's messages at the same time. We don't know there's anything out there. We're not listening. But when we do listen, when we focus, we generally get them. The message in this song is simple. Fight for what you believe in. Fight for what you believe in. A simple message, but very difficult to do sometimes. But if you believe in something strong enough, and it can help make this world a better place, and it is important to you, no matter the odds or the possible outcome, stand straight and tall and fight for your convictions. And fight for your convictions. You'll be the winner no matter what the result, because you tried and did your best. You gave it your all. This world would be a better place if more people did that. So that's really what pushed me over the edge to say, okay, I'm listening. I heard the message. I got it. Three different ways. I guess you can say that we kind of got bitten by the activism bug. It's not usually until people who are affected by some sort of adversity speak up and another one and another one and another one until you actually finally understand that this is a problem. That's what activism accomplishes. And that's why it's so important, because unless those of us who have been affected speak up about it, nothing's going to change. Yeah. That being said, there are people who can't. That's been the motivation or the driving force behind my particular reason for continuing, is because there are people who can't. There are people who are still hiding in the organization because their, their spouse or their children or their parents are still extremely devout and to leave or to speak up or to to do anything to even would, say anything to even say anything would cost them and if you are physically in but mentally out you know what that cost is it is an extremely high cost
I tried to contact them. I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I missed being with my family, but they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. It could have made me think that there was no need to return to Jehovah. And it's for those people who who can't, we have to give them a voice. It's, it's part of the reason why we haven't delved too deeply into the allegations of abuse and suicide, because it's not our story. It has happened to people that we know. It has happened to friends of ours. We can count on two hands the number of people that have had this happen to them. Yeah. I can appreciate the fact that they may not want to bring it up and talk about it, and that's, that's fine. For those who want to but can't or who are afraid to, how can we, how can we help them? I think that's the aspect that we've really found our niche in is hearing your stories, seeing your comments, listening to what you have to say has been the highlight of the eight videos that we've made so far. There's this whole community around being an ex Jehovah's Witness that we knew existed but we didn't see it firsthand the way that it has been portrayed in the comments on YouTube. That's where we really want to help. We want you to know we hear you. We want you to know that we see you. We understand. And we're just so grateful for, for you voicing your story, for you sharing your experience because we want you to know that your experience is valid. Your story is valid. That tends to be a line of justification for Jehovah's Witnesses about apostates is, oh, they all sound the same. Oh, they always have the same story. It's true. We all have a similar story. There's a similar ring to what it's like coming out or why we came out or what happened to us when we were in. Even though all of our stories might have a similar ring to them, each one is valid. Each one is important. Each one deserves a voice. It has to be heard. Jehovah's Witnesses affect everyone. From the outside looking in, it might seem that there are kind people, a clean people, they don't curse, they're a little strange with not celebrating the holidays or their birthdays. These people knock on your doors. Their children go to school with your children. They're instructed to teach your children that if they don't become a Jehovah's Witness, they most likely will die at Armageddon. We're the only ones that can make it understood what it was like being in it what it was like coming out of it, what it's like to be affected by it. That's part of the unless. Unless we, collectively, can all raise our voice and say, this has to stop, nothing is ever going to get better.